What's good, YouTube? This is the only big green Yu-Gi-Oh again, back again with another deck profile. And this deck profile is the X Saber deck profile from the 2010 format that me and my friend plays a lot. And I've actually uploaded a YouTube video of the Infernities yesterday, or it might have uploaded to YouTube early this morning. But this YouTube video is definitely going to be uploaded here soon as well, whenever it gets uploaded. And this was the x Saber deck that my friend was playing up against me in the duel video that we made a few months back. So let's get right into this. Starting off, we're starting off with the x Saber Tuner Monsters. You play three Air Bellum. He's the best tuner in the deck and one of the best monsters in the deck. He's a 16k beater and whenever he inflicts battle damage, you're, you, have to, you can discard a card from your opponent's hand at random. He's mainly he's your main target for rescue cat as well. And now two of the full metal knight. I was running three in this, but I cut it down to two because I wanted to play mirror force. And I was looking through my deck, and there was really nothing that I wanted to cut to put mirror force in. So I decided to cut him down to two. Well, her down to two to run that mirror force. But definitely, if you want to play three. It's pretty good at 3. I did I did like this card at 3, but I just had to find room for Mirror Force. Anyways, it virtually has a Utopia effect where once per turn while it's face up, you can negate an attack. And then now on to this guy right here. He's really good because he's virtually a Spirit Reaper, but during the... During your standby phase, you take a thousand damage if he's in face-up defense mode. But I normally just set him down for like one turn to get a stall for one turn so I can go off for next turn. And then next up we have the final tuner monster, Palomaro. I just use him because he's a level 1 tuner so it makes it easier to go into level 5 synchros. That's virtually the only reason I use him. Or if I have like a mist worm play, like awkward levels that x Sabers normally couldn't make, he just helps me go into with. Now on to the non-tuners of the x Sabers. Uh, three, Full Troll. He's probably the best monster in the deck. Whenever, whenever you control two or more face-up x Saber monsters, you can special summon him from his hand. And he has an effect to where once per turn, you can special summon a level 4 or lower x Saber monster from your deck. And this guy is really good for hand-looping your opponent with if you can pull the combo off. And now, another good card. I did play him at 3. I cut him down to 2 because 3 was just way too much. But Bogart Knight, he virtually is has a Maraud and Captain effect for x Sabers. where if he's normal summon, you can special summon level 4 or lower x Saber monster. And he can only be used as a synchro material monster for an x Saber. That's the only reason why I cut him down to 2 because you really only use him to go into your level 7 Urbellum. That's really the only reason you use him. Now on to... Another arguably best X Saber monster of the deck. Most people will probably agree that this is the best one other than the full helm or four metal. This guy is really good because he's virtually a Sangin for your X Saber monsters. Where you can at whenever he's sent to the graveyard at the end phase, during the end phase that he's sent, you can search your deck for an X Saber monster and add it to hand. So he sets you up to go into hand loop plays and he sets you up for OTKs and other combos, which is nice. And then for the last X Saber monster, we play one Emmer's Blade. I was playing this guy at three, then I cut him to two, then I cut him to one. And right now, one is working the best for me. I feel like he's. I feel like he doesn't need to be cut from the deck, but I definitely don't feel like he needs to be up to two or three. What he does is it's. What he does is kind of like Dark Soul, but kind of not. Whenever he's sent to the graveyard by battle, you special summon a level four or lower X Saber monster from the deck. Normally, what I do with him is whenever he's destroyed, I'll go and search a Dark Soul, or what I'll do is I'll go and I'll search a Poshul, or I'll go and search this guy. And then on to the non X Saber monsters, the main card of the deck, Rescue Cat. This card is one of the reasons why this deck was playable back then. This card really, 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 really would win games. Normally, if you drop this card, you would be able to push for game that turn or set up a pretty big board to where it's hard for your opponent to out. And what this card does, if you guys don't know, is you contribute it, and then the main combo you would do with it is you would go and special your Dark Soul from your deck, and then you would get your Air Bellum from your deck. 
And then if you want, you can go into battle phase there. Or if you're just scared, you can just stay in main phase one and sync up into a level six like Hunley to deal with their back row. And next up, Summoner Monk. Pretty much an uh, easier way to get into your cat. Or if you can't get into your cat, you can get something like Airbellum or another guy to synchro into a level 7. But he was mainly used for cat. Sangin, because self-explanatory, pretty much almost every deck. Anytime Sangin's been legal, every deck's pretty much just played him until, of course, he got his errata, which is annoying. But he's just a way of getting into cat. And the final monster, I play one DD Crow. I want to play two DD Crow, but I don't know what I want to take out. But if you guys test around with this deck and play this format, and you guys can fit a second DD Crow or even a third DD Crow, I advise you to do so, because this card is so underlooked in this format. If you look at a lot of the toppings, this card was either sided or mained at three, and a lot of the decks that topped back then during this format. Mainly because of the fact that you can discard it and banish a card from the grave. So it stops Black Wings. It can stop this deck if they try to use like the full troll effect or something like that. And then it absolutely kills Infernities. Onto the spells. You play one Gold Sark to pretty much get your Cat or get your Summoner Monk or get your DD Crow. Uh, one Brain Control because this is like a... This is a huge synchro format, and you guys know how taking your opponent's monsters and syncing with it is very fun. That's the only reason I really play this card. And sometimes if they only have one monster, you can take it and just push for game right there. Uh, Book of Moon. I play two. I believe this was only at two at the time. If not, I might have to figure out to play three, but I'm pretty sure this card was only at two. But I just use it as an interrupt to interrupt my opponent. If they try to go into, if they try to normal summon cat and they tribute cat, when they get the air bellum and the dark soul, I'll just book the, I'll book their air bellum so that way they can't tune with it that turn and it forces them to like play another weird play. Or if I'm playing something like Infernities and they're trying to launch or loop or something like that, whenever they try to bring back the Archfiend, I'll book the Archfiend so that way they can't continue to loop for the rest of the turn. Next up, I kind of like to call this the Power 4. It's not known as the Power 4, but I like to call it as the Power 4. You play Cold Wave, Giant Trinade, Heavy Storm, and then MST. Yes, MST was at 1, or if not, I would be playing more in this deck. But MST, self-explanatory, destroy a spell or trap card. Heavy Storm, destroy all spell and trap cards on the field. Giant Trinade, return all in spell and traps on the field to the hand. And then Cold Wave, pretty much... This card is my most hated card in the game, if you guys didn't know that. People that personally know me, you know I hate this card. It's my most hated card. Mainly because of the fact that you can just activate it and nobody can set or activate spell and trap cards till the end of the turn. Most of the time, if you activate this, you normally win that turn. Or you're going to win the next turn. I feel like this card should just say you win the duel because it's that strong. And then onto the traps. This does play a heavy trap lineup, which sucks. But three Gotham's Call. You could probably get away with playing two or one, but I like three because this card lets you go into your hand loop plays and some OTK plays. But what it does is if you control a face-up X-Saber... Well, actually, let me, let me reword that. If a face-up X-Saber monster is on the field, you can special summon two... Of your X Saber monsters from the grave. So yes, if your opponent, if you're playing the mirror match of this format, you can target your opponent's X Saber monster that they control to activate this card effect. So that's kind of pretty dirty. Uh, I was playing three, but I cut it down to two. Saber hole. Whenever you control a face up X Saber monster, you can negate a summon of a monster. The reason why I cut it down to two is it can't stop it can't stop things like Call of the Haunted or anything like that. It can only stop things like Synchro Summon. Uh, two Bottomless Trap Hole. Cause Bottomless, I believe, was only at two. And with this deck, I like making a big board and setting a whole bunch of cards and not allowing my opponent to play. So that's the reason why I run two Bottomless Trap Hole. And then this is the reason why I'm not playing the third Full Metal Knight. I had to cut it out for the Mirror Force because Mirror Force is just way too strong to not play. And it just, it really puts your opponent in a pickle if they push way too hard and you Mirror Force them. 
there's really nothing they can do at that point but just pass. And I like to call this the power four of the trap cards. One TT, one Royal Oppression, one Solemn Judgment, and then one Trap Dust Shoot. Trap Dust Shoot is very dirty for the fact that you get to look at your opponent's hands if they have four more cards in it and then send a monster back to the deck. This is virtually a game ender unless if your opponent's playing Infernities. And then Solemn Judgment, we all should know what this does. Arguably the greatest Yu-Gi-Oh card ever or the greatest trap card ever. And then Royal Oppression, easily top five trap card ever or even top five Yu-Gi-Oh card ever. Whenever opponent would, well, whenever either player would special summon, that player can pay 800 life points to negate the special summon. So what you normally do with this card is I'll just make a huge board. If I have the hand loop combo, I'll hand loop them. Then I'll set this pass. And whenever they would go to special summon, I'll just chain Royal. And they virtually scoop at that point. And then TT, just because it's a board wipe... The Dark Hole was banned at this time. Raigeki was banned. So as many board wipes as you can get as possible, you need to play. And TT was only at one. So I feel like it's a must play. Now on to the extra deck. You play one magic For the level fives, you play one magical android. And where is the other one? I'm sorry, guys. My extra deck is all mixed up right now. Ally of Justice Cataster and then Sea Dragon. Sea Dragon, I don't really go into as much. This is normally a card that I go into in Fernies. If you guys watch the Inferni video, I just share the extra deck. The extra deck is virtually exactly the same because of my play style preference. So it's except the same for like three cards. But I use this because it's a big beater and I can normally win the game if I can get this guy out. And then Ally Justice Cataster for self-explanatory reasons. If you're playing the mirror match and you make this, you kind of win the game because everything's earth and nothing's dark. And up against Infernities, this probably isn't that good to go into because all Infernities are dark. So this is really just a mirror match card. And then Magical Android, just because it's one of the only other level 5s. And if you're in a pickle to where you need to gain life, you just make this guy sit on her, set like a bunch of trap cards to stall your opponent out, and just gain life with her. On to level 6s. You play one Goyo, or not, one Gaia, one Goyo. What am I doing? And then you play the one Brio. Brio for pretty much just getting rid of dead cards in your hand and returning cards to your opponent's hand. This card is the game ender in Infernities. And then, oh yeah, everything is pre-errata, so you don't have to play by the errata rules in this format. So it's nice because this isn't once per turn during this format. Goyo for killing things and taking it. And then Gaia just for level 8 synchro plays. Uh, one Black Rose, it's the only level 7 I'm playing other than the x Saber level 7. Again, no board wipes that much in this format. All of them are banned or put to 1, so it's just a way of clearing the board. Stardust, on to the level 8s now. Stardust, because self-explanatory, I mean, the best synchro at this time, arguably. Thought Ruler, pretty much puts your opponent to where they can't target your Psychic-type monsters. And whenever he destroys something by battle, it inflicts that burn damage, which is real nice. Colossal Fighter, because some of your x sabers are warriors, and he gains attack, and also his effect to where he can revive himself. Red Dragon for if you're up against something like FTK Frogs that are trying to stall you out or up against something like that, like Infernity where they're trying to stall you out or even if you're playing the Mirror Match and they set the Postule, just no, no, destroy that. Now on to another one of my favorite, this is probably my favorite Synchro of this format, Mistworm. A lot of my OTK plays I normally go into with this card. Because whenever he's summoned, he has like a mini giant trunade effect where he can bounce back three cards your opponent controls. So normally what I do is I'll normally try to make a Stardust Dragon and then go into this guy. And at that point, I kind of just auto win. Now on to the x Saber. Uh, one Hunley. I thought about getting a second one and upping it, but I've... I feel like it's pre I normally only go into it like once a duel anyways and most people that I play this format with only go into it once a duel too so I feel like it's good where it's at but again it's kind of like a little it's kind of like with Mistworm but more of a heavy storm effect where you destroy three spell or trap cards your opponent controls uh Airbellum cause it's like your only level 7 that you can go into with your other plays and if you have four or more cards in your hand, it's like a dumbed-down trap dust shoot where you can ditch a card at random from your opponent's hand. 
And then this guy here is really, really good. The guy that creates the hand loop. It's X Saber Gotham's. His effect is you contribute one X Saber monster and then discard one card from your opponent's hand at random. How you normally pull this off if you is you have him on the field and then where is he? You have like a full troll on the field. And then a monster already on the field, so like a Dark Soul. And this is actually very easy to do. And what you can do is you can just like pop this with his effect. There's a card out of your opponent's hand. Bring it back. Pop it again. And then pop this. So that's like three cards out of your opponent's hand already. Or if you have something like a Gotham's Call set, then you're getting all five cards out of your opponent's hand if you can do this on turn one. So it's very simple to do. It's just you have to set up for it. And that's my x Ever deck profile, guys. This video actually ran a whole lot longer than normal because normally my videos last like 13 minutes. So I'm sorry if this video is like 3 minutes longer than the average. But anyways, this is my x Ever deck profile. If you want to see more duels of this format, I have Black Wings built from this format. And you guys have already seen my FTK Frog deck from this format. So if you guys want to see any of them, I can bring you videos again of this format. And... Thank you guys for taking your time out of the day to watch this video. Appreciate you guys. Uh, this has been the only big green, Johnny. This has been the only big green, Yu-Gi-Oh! Or Johnny, and I'm signing out.